and continues in the same way. So just for anybody who might have joined in um, late, I'm just going to go through the only changes to the directives. They're substantial changes or they're substantive changes, and they mean a lot because persons have been agitating for them. We know the supermarkets and mini-marts were agita agitating for them and the village shops. So in some, in, in some respects, these changes were expected to be coming. Supermarkets, mini marts, village shops are to reopen on Sundays. Auto marts are allowed to do their full service on Sundays. Spectatorless sports are to be fully allowed, subject of course to observing COVID protocols. And competitive sporting events, including horse racing, may only be held with the prior permission of the COVID monitoring unit, with those with the exception of those stated adjustments, all that observe, all that pertains now and obtains now remains in force. So the bus capacity is the exact same. Good evening. Uh, question to the Home Affairs Min uh, Minister Bostic, Health Minister. Uh, can you provide an update on where we are relative to procuring more vaccine doses? I know Barbados had earlier this year reached out to get vaccines from different manufacturers, different countries. Can you give us an update? Thank you. Yes, we, we are still awaiting the arrival of vaccines through the COVAX facility from the African medical platform through some other sources that the government of Barbados have been able to arrange um, additional vaccines with. And most recently, because the World Health Organization has given emergency status to two additional vaccines which will now be on the COVAX list and the PAHO list. That is two vaccines from China, Sinopharm and Sinovac. And the government of the People's Republic of China uh, have graciously consented to donate some Sinopharm vaccines to Barbados. And we, will, we are in the process of making arrangements, logistical arrangements for those vaccines to arrive on island. So those are about four different, different sources that we continue to pursue in order to be able to uh, achieve the level of vaccinations in the country that would allow us um, herd immunity. And, and I must say, I, and I commend all of those persons who've been working with this, from the public health officials to the, the coordinators, all those on the ground, and for Barbadians who've been coming forward. We've done well in terms of the number of persons that we've been able to vaccinate. But we would have been much further if we had the capacity. If we had those resources available to us, we would be in a far better position. But as you know, we do not control our destiny in this regard. And so we continue to pursue um, obtaining as many more vaccines as we possibly can. Final question from me. Uh, the CDC last month announced new, more relaxed guidelines for Americans who are fully vaccinated. Uh, including not having to wear masks in certain environments. Barbados, as you said, has over uh, 61,000 fully vaccinated people and growing daily. How far along is Barbados or at what point can Barbados start modeling similar guidelines uh, given the progress that we've made so far in our vaccination campaign? Well, we are nowhere near that. I can tell you that because there's still a level of uncertainty in relation to these matters and based on our own experience, because that has to count for something. Remember, we utilize whatever comes from international organizations. Uh, we, we, we utilize those things as guidance to help us to craft what we have to do here in Barbados. But at this point in time, we will continue, and PAHO has given that guidance that we continue to maintain all public health measures that we have in place at this time and we do not intend to move from that point until we are fairly satisfied and until the guidance takes us in that direction well let me at this time thank the minister of health and wellness lieutenant colonel the Honourable Jeffrey Bostick, the Minister of Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs, the Honourable Wilfred Abrams, and the Minister of Tourism and International Transport, Senator the Honourable Lisa Cummins, for addressing us. Members of the media, thank you for your questions and you for joining us. Good evening.